Okay, I want to do one more thing with this example. And it has to do with the choice of the plane to use in the table. Now, remember that this is the given information. All of it is given. The values of the stresses are given, and the angles are given. So, in other words, you're given that that is 30 degrees. You're given that that is 60 degrees, or you can figure that out. So, the angles are given. Now, when I did this example the first time, I chose to start at plane B. I could also choose to start at plane A. So I'm going to rework the example choosing to start at plane A. Again, my goal, <laughs> put it this way, the, the problem is stated to find the stresses on the horizontal plane. So that is my goal. Again, in a sense, that's a given also. Find the stresses on the horizontal plane. So my goal is to get geometrically from either plane A or plane B to the horizontal plane. That's my goal. So this time I will start at plane A. So again, there, oops. There is plane A, and there's also a plane A, but I'm going to use the first one. To get from plane A to the horizontal plane, I have to go 60 degrees. i put it this way. I have to go 60 degrees, and I have to go clockwise. So let me go through that one more time. To get from plane A to the horizontal plane, I have to go 60 degrees clockwise. Okay, so using plane A, I create a new table. And if I look at it, what I'm saying is in the real world, so this is the real world, so again, this is the real world, this is the more world. I am doing, I, first, the real world. So I'm going to start at plane A. I'm going to go 60 degrees clockwise. That is exactly what we just showed. Once I have that established, then I'm going to complete my table and the way that it works is these two are the same a a to go to to go to the more world from real to more i double it so i go from 60 degrees to 120 degrees and then i reverse the direction clockwise to counterclockwise so i end up with starting at plane a going 120 degrees counterclockwise. I now need to follow these instructions in the more world. So let's go one at a time. So I look at my, the first thing I do, my starting plane is plane A, so I have to find plane A and more. Well, where is plane A and more? Plane A and more is right there. We labeled it. I'm now going to go 120 degrees clockwise from plane A, starting plane A. So, I'm oh, sorry, I misspoke. Counterclockwise. Uh, let me go through it one more time. Using the method that we developed, I start at plane A, I go 120 degrees counterclockwise. So I'm going to follow those instructions. 
I first find plane A on the war diagram. I'm now going to go 120 degrees counterclockwise. It takes me there. So 120 degrees on the Morris circle counterclockwise. Now where do I end up? Well, again you have to look at the geometry and trigonometry of the Morse circle that's been drawn. And what we learn is that, you know, one, you know we know that beta is 63.4. That, that means that that angle there is 63.4. If that's 63.4, then this angle is 180 minus 63.4. And, um, and that angle then, uh, let's see, I guess I don't have a number on that, but let's figure it out real quickly. Um, <clears throat> that angle is 116.6. So when I, okay, so, so that is 116.6, oops, that means that going 120 degrees from here is going to take me above the x-axis by 3.4 degrees. So I end up with the same result in the sense I still end up at the same point that I had before. So I end up here and I still cr have to create this same, same triangle gets created Everything else ends up to be the same. The end result being that I can use either plane to begin my problem. So in other words, um, the first time I worked it, I used plane B to begin. The second time I worked it, I used plane A to begin. If you do everything right, it doesn't matter. You're still going to end up at the same point on in the Moore world, and you're going to end up doing the same calculations. Either one works. Okay. Now, so let me just state something that... Um, Uh, that, okay, suppose, well, put it this way, um, suppose I wanted to know not the stresses on the horizontal planes, that's what is fine, stresses on the horizontal plane, suppose I wanted to know what are the stresses on a vertical plane. So, how does that change my problem? Well, It changes, doesn't change the circle. Circle always stays the same. The circle, I draw the circle based on that. Circle stays the same, doesn't change the circle. All it changes is my, my table changes. Let's see how it changes. Let's look in the real world. I'm going to draw a vertical plane in the real world. There's a vertical plane. I 
I would then, again, I write, I look at the real world and I write down instructions on how to get to that vertical plane. Well, I'm just going to do, I'm going to start at B in this case. I could start at A if I wanted to, but I'm going to start at B. And then I'm going to go this angle, and that is clockwise. And I have to figure out what that angle is. Well, it's pretty obvious from the sketch here that that is going to be 60 degrees. So I'm going to write my instructions. My starting plane is going to be B. My angle is going to be 60 degrees. And the direction is going to be clockwise. Once I've done that, then remember these two stay the same. 60 degrees doubles to 120. The clockwise changes to the opposite counterclockwise. And now I would follow these instructions on the more circle to get me to the point that gives me the stresses on the vertical plane. So if we follow these instructions, so I start at plane B, find plane B on the Mohr circle, I go 120 degrees counterclockwise. So if I were to do that, I'm not going to go through all the details, I'm going to go 120 degrees like that, I'm going to end up over here, I'm right there. Now notice that there we go. when I sketch this out, I'm gonna, I end up over here. I'm going to let you do the geometry on it. Notice it's, it's, I'm on the same line. All I have to do, I'm just completely opposite. I'm over here. So here is my, I get another little triangle that's the same triangle as the triangle on this side, I end up, you know, because they're congruent triangles. And so the geometry is easy, I end up with the same calculation for that. So we'll look more at the impact of this, but put it this way. Once you find the stresses on, on our little square here, so in other words, once I find the stresses on the horizontal plane, Finding the stresses on the vertical plane is extremely easy. You don't really even have to think about it for in the future. All you have to do is extend the line to the other side of the circle. So in the future, when we want to find stresses on planes that, are, that differ by 90 degrees in the real world, like these do, they differ by 90 degrees. There's you know, vertical planes and horizontal planes, they differ by 90 degrees. Well, what that's the real world is 90 degrees. What is it in the Moore world? It's 180 degrees, right? Because everything doubles. So when it's 180 degrees, well, I just go 180 degrees from my other previous point that I found. And that makes it very simple to find the stresses on the other plane.